Welcome back guys. I hope you enjoyed part one and two of this series. Uh, today we're going to be getting the engine block cleaned up and uh, start getting everything prepared to be assembled. So, um, you know, I'm going to show you guys how to clean the, the surfaces of the engine. Um, we're going to get the pistons cleaned up. I'm going to uh, go ahead and, and uh, get everything reassembled. So I hope you guys enjoy the footage. And again, thanks for watching. Hey guys, I just got done cleaning the pistons. Um, I soaked them in a solution for about 12 hours and uh, scrubbed them down. And then I actually went ahead and polished the top of the pistons. So I'll show you guys that. Um, you can see there's one side done and this side's not done. So you can tell a big difference. Can you see your face on this side? Nope. What about this side? This side. Yes. They're sunny. Nice. Them sunny. Do they look? Do they look nice? Them sunny. Yeah. Them sunny. <laughs> Don't mess. So anyway, Don't uh, mess I'm just shh, all right. So now I'm using the uh this concrete uh cotton, some kind of cotton compound uh polishing pad. I've got a stack of them, but uh, I'm using that and some cutting compound and some polish. So but doing this side right here probably took me about. I don't know, probably about 20 minutes. And the biggest benefit that's going to make it a lot uh, better as far as having stuff build up on the pistons and uh, cuts down on any detonation. You know, if there's anything on the pistons, it, it can cause detonation. So, Don't um, not sign it yet. No, not yet. We're going to get them in a minute, aren't we? What's this? We're going to do mom? those next. What's my mom? All right, guys, the other side's done. Keep in mind these are cast pistons and I wasn't trying to, you know, resurface them or anything like that, but they are polished very smooth. You know, just like the other side, so. Alright guys, I'm down to the last piston and uh, I wanted to show you guys, or at least explain what I have going on here uh, in case you've never assembled an engine before, uh, you know, to give you give you an idea of what's going on. So you can see that I've got the engine um, at an angle, right? So the deck surface that I'm working on right now is actually facing up 
And uh, most engine stands, every, every engine stand I've ever worked on, you're able to turn it to different positions and lock it in. So uh, basically what you want to do is rotate the crankshaft until the uh, bearing journal is in the middle of the cylinder and you've got your deck surface pretty level up here at the top. It's not it's not dead level, but it's close enough. And um, that way when you bring the piston into the cylinder, you're gonna have an easier time of guiding the rod down and getting it uh, on the rod journal, you know, properly. So uh, that's one thing that'll make things a lot easier. And uh, so basically as I assembled this engine, I already had all the rings and the bearings placed into the, to the rods and the pistons, obviously. And uh, I started on the odd side on GM, you know, that's the driver's side. And, you know, so you go one, three, five, seven. And so basically I just kept that side up. And every time that I wanted to put a new piston in, I would just rotate the, the crankshaft and, uh, you know, center up the, the bearing journal and go ahead and tap that piston in and, and put the cap on. It's not torqued, none of them are torqued yet. But, um, but anyway, so it's, it's in and the cap is screwed on. I just, I just put it on with my uh, cordless ratchet. So that'll give you an idea of, of the assembly process. Um, so on the pistons themselves, um, you got your ring orientation. And basically what you want to do, uh, first of all, the mark on the piston signifies facing forward towards the front of the engine. So every single piston, this marks the face forward. And, uh, you know, so that, that helps you a little bit right there. You don't have to worry as much about your rod orientation. Um, as long as, as long as every piston goes back in where it came out. And you can see these are all numbered. They've got the number stamped in the top of two, four, six, eight. I'm on the uh, even side right now. So uh, what you're gonna wanna do is basically the side of the piston that faces up. You're gonna put your compression ring, which is the top ring, um, facing up. And then you're gonna put your scraper ring, which is the second ring facing down. And generally what I do is I'll put the oil rings facing to the right side of the piston. So you'll have, you got your, your oil ring spacer, and then you got your two oil rings. And um, what I like to do is basically I'll put the, the gap of the oil ring spacer and then I put one oil ring, like say the bottom oil ring to one side, and I'll put the top oil ring to the other side. And then I center that up on the right side of the piston. And then like I said, I put the compression ring, gap straight up, the scraper ring, gap straight down, and then you're ready to install the piston. The next thing you wanna do is to lubricate the piston. And um, so that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna go ahead and spray it down uh, with some lubricant. It doesn't have to be uh, oil, you know, it could be oil. Um, I just prefer to use a, a penetrating lubricant myself. Um, it's just easy and, and that's really all you need. As soon as you fire this thing up, oil's gonna splash all over everything anyway, so. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Once you've got the lubricant on the rings, I like to kind of spin them around just a little bit, make sure that you know the, the lubricant is in the rings. And then like I said, at that point, you want to check your orientation. So I put the oil ring to the right, scraper ring gap down, compression ring gap up. And once you've gotten to that point, then you can go ahead and get your compression sleeve or whatever type of tool you're using to compress your rings into the cylinder. So get this thing kind of starting to be snowed. Make sure that all your sleeves are even, you know, so it's all flat. And then you're gonna tighten this thing down tight. Like pretty much as many clicks as you can get out of it. And uh, that'll give you a better chance of getting the piston in the cylinder. So the next thing I'm gonna do is actually spray a little bit of lubricant in the cylinder. And you don't need a whole lot, but you just want a little, you know, you just need something in there, you know, just to, just to keep things slippery. Basically is what we're looking for. Um, so the, you also wanna leave the skirt exposed when you install your compression ring uh, one of the 
to that. So go ahead and orientate your piston to the front of the engine. Drop it in. Get the piston lined up. And uh, like I said, point that point that mark, you know, towards where it's gonna go. Give your tool a couple of taps to make sure it's seated fully. And then you're gonna you're gonna knock this piston down into the cylinder and you wanna hold the ring down and you want to give it a, a couple of firm hits. Um, once you get a good feel for it, a lot of times you can just do it in one hit, um, but it might take a couple. But what you want to do is make sure that you keep downward pressure on this tool and make sure that it's seated fully. And, uh, you know, if your piston gets stuck, just stop, reset, and, and try it again because you don't, want to, you don't want to try to force the piston down in there. Your, one of your rings is likely caught on the top of the cylinder. So let's see if I can do this on camera. So there you go. And um, so once the once the piston is in the cylinder, you're gonna reach down underneath and you're gonna guide the rod onto the bearing drum. Make sure nothing binds up, make sure it's straight. It should slide right on there. So everything's good there. And uh, of course you wanna make sure that you put your assembly lubricant in the bearing, so. Um, next, we'll take the bearing cap, and again, you want to make sure everything's clean, and uh, you know, make sure there's nothing on any of the mating surfaces. And you're going to add a few drops of assembly lube, and you're not going to need a whole lot. You just need a, a film in there. Um, Basically, if you, you know, put a lot of lubricant on there, it's just going to squeeze it out anyway. So, um, you just need a, a nice light coat around there. And that's just to protect it from, you know, uh, when you spin it around or anything like that. So, I'm going to go ahead and put the cap on the bottom of the piston. And uh, I'll also mention on the LS engines, these uh, rod caps are, are what's called cracked. Um, they're not machine service on the stock rods. And so you have to make sure that the seam lines up on the sides. You'll, it's very obvious. If it's backwards, it will not seat properly. So um, make sure it's facing the right direction. Go ahead and snug the very cut down. And uh, that's, that's good. And then I'll show you guys. Um, I hope there's enough light here. But you can see how I just screwed this cap on. And you want to make sure nothing's bound up. So basically when you put this thing together, you should be able to move it side to side. And I've already checked all the clearances and everything. This one's right at 15 thousandths, which is what you want on an LS engine. So, um, like I said, if, it, if something's bound up, you're not going to be able to, to move it like that. And I know it's not torqued down yet, but it is. It is tight, it's fully seated. And so if you can if you can move it side to side, um, you should be in good shape. So anyway, I hope that answers all your questions. pistons and everything put in the bottom of the block it's time to start getting to the good stuff so we got some parts from uh texas speed ready to go in and this isn't everything we got but i just figured all this stuff was in a box i'd show it to you um you know we've got oil pump and uh trunnion upgrade so and there's there's other stuff we'll, we'll, we'll get to that calm down we'll get to it I wanted to let you guys know that I got all these parts from dsperformance.net and uh, those guys are a, a military uh, veteran owned company and uh, they give excellent discounts all the time so uh, you guys give them a shout if you're looking for any parts you can go to their website um, you can message them on Facebook if you find DS Performance on Facebook and uh, if you put in code 
RHG, they will be 20% nicer. Trunnions for a second. Uh, I know I've done a video on them in the past, but I figured I would include it in this video that way um, You know you guys will know what's going on so basically you knock all the um, the stock trunnions out and All you have to do is just find a this is a 7-8 socket And you want to work on this this side with the flat pedestal on it And uh, so you see one side is round and one side has got these little flat spots on it so you can put your socket up against those feet right there and um so basically you just find you know two sockets like that and a maybe a 14 millimeter you got 14 millimeter and just push it right through you know with a, a press or a vice or whatever so um you know that's all you have to do to knock the old ones out so so to put in the new ones what we're going to do we're going to get our new trunnion and the bearings out of the package but some of them come packaged individually like this some of them are in you know boxes already slid onto the trunnion but uh basically what we're going to do is we're going to put our flat side down we're going to put one of our bearings inside okay stick the trunnion in there go ahead and get the get it inside the bearing and then we're gonna slide our other bearing to the outside, like that. So you should be looking like this with your, your flat side to the back. And what we're gonna do is slip a washer over the front, put your big washer, I mean a uh, big socket behind it on the flat side. And then I'm gonna use another socket on the front to press this guy in. this together so basically you're just gonna line everything up whatever tool you're using a, a parts press or anything like that it doesn't take a lot of force to push this on here but you're just gonna press that in until your washer bottoms out on the front and then you just take it out and it's installed the only problem is it's rock solid so you're going to take your brass hammer and there's other ways to do this if you wanted to flip it over and, and put you know the washer and everything on there but it doesn't take much but what i'm going to do you can see that this um this flat side is facing the back so i'm going to hit the front side just kind of square with a brass hammer don't use i mean you might could use a regular hammer but a brass hammer is preferred but um all i did was just tap it and uh and she's all freed up so it's almost like doing a universal joint on a dry shaft or something you know you got to tap them to loosen the center of the bearings up so next we're going to take and put the snap ring on here or what they're calling a bearing keeper and uh, you just want to make sure that that thing is seated all the way around and uh, that's pretty much all you got to do do that on both sides There we go. And once everything's done, you just want to look down the side, make sure your clips are all straight. Some of these clips will spin around like this, some of them won't, but you just want to make sure that they're in the groove all the way around, seated fully. 
and you want this thing to spin around with no resistance whatsoever and uh, so that's that's a properly installed trunnion and uh, you know this this upgrade is very important if you're running any kind of aftermarket springs or high lift cam or anything um, the trunnions themselves are way thicker than the stock ones and you know the the snap ring if you look on there the snap ring traps the needle bearing so for some reason they do come apart they can't really get out because of the snap ring so it's just the most better upgrade you've also got more travel the stock ones only move a certain amount and and the way they're designed it um matter of fact i've got one right here the way the stock was designed it can only turn that far and that's it and you can you you can also see that this one's got a lot of play in it um you know they just they just wear out over time so got got a ton of play in this thing and you can see that that's the size of the trunnion right there so there's a big difference between this and this a huge difference and it's not it's not a high cost and it's really not that difficult to install so definitely want to do this if you're doing any kind of performance build whatsoever on an ls engine Got the heads installed, got the lifters, push rods, the whole top end is put together. 
Um, I did want to talk about the head the head bolts um, or studs uh, with the ARP uh, and an aluminum block, especially fourth gen. You have to be very careful not to over torque the bolts. And um, I've never had this happen, but I've had a friend that um, pulled the threads out of the block. So um, if you look at ARP's torque specs, um, you know, it rates the bolts to be torqued down to 70 foot pounds of torque. And um, I think for the most part, that's okay, but you have to make sure to follow the instructions closely. I just want to make sure that I mention this because the the friction of the washers is a big part of the torque spec. So if you you know follow the instructions, the newer washers actually have like a pattern on one side and it's supposed to kind of stick to the head so the washer doesn't turn. Um but if you've got the smooth washers, you need to either sand them, you know, you need to sand them just a little bit to where they're kind of rough on the bottom, on the head side. And, um, you know, that way the washers don't spin. Because if the washer spins in the head um, and you try to pull it down to torque, it's going to, something bad is going to happen. So just got to make sure that you follow the instructions. Um, personally, I don't like to take it up to 70 foot pounds on an aluminum block either way. Um, you know, I, I brought them up to 60, and, uh, you know, this, this engine's not boosted or anything, so it's going to be fine. Um, Gen 4, you know, all the bolts, are the big bolts are all the same length, and they're all shorter. Um, I don't know if a lot of people know that, but all the bolts are, like, basically the short bolts. And on the Gen 3, you've got two of the shorter bolts, and then a lot of them are, or most of them are all much longer, so... Um, there's, there's a big difference between how many threads and all that kind of stuff between Gen 3 and Gen 4. Um, if you're working on a cast iron block, I wouldn't even, I mean, you, you don't have to worry about it much at all. I mean, you want to follow the guidelines, make sure the washer doesn't spin and all that good stuff. But, um, you know, 70 foot pounds is not a big deal. But I, I just personally, I get a little nervous putting that much torque on an aluminum block. So, but, um, you know, when I installed the front and rear cover, you know, I put a straight edge on here to make sure this stuff's flat. Um, you know, so that's all good to go. Um, when you're putting your oil pan on, you want to make sure, first of all, that this is clean. Like, you want to take, like, a grease, you know, a degreaser de or a wax remover or some kind of cleaner and make sure that the surface is very clean. And then on these corners, you're going to want to take um, and put a dab of some... Uh, like permatex like black or you know gray stuff or something but you just just want to put a little dab right here in each one of these spots and uh you know that way you don't have to worry about you know if there's a little bit of a gap here uh you don't have to worry about it leaking and uh you know you want to make sure that this surface is very clean and um uh, you know everything is is good because your oil pressure from your whole entire engine actually comes through these two ports right here. And I'm sure most of you know this, but I'm just throwing this out here for people that might not know. You know, so these ports go to your oil filter. And so the, the engine, I mean, the oil pump pumps the fluid through, comes out of one of these ports, goes to the oil filter, comes back from the oil filter, goes back through the other port. And so whatever oil pressure you're making, you know, is going to be going through your oil, I mean your uh, oil pan gasket. So number one, don't reuse your oil pan gasket. Even if it looks really good, just get a new one. And, um, you know, just make sure that you tighten it in sequence and make sure it's, you know, the, the oil pan is seated properly and make sure that it's torqued to spec. And like I said, make sure you put just a little dab of a uh, sealant on these four corners. And one other thing I like to do is you'll notice on these gaskets, there's a little bit of rubber protruding up past the surface. So I'm actually gonna take a, uh, a razor knife and just very carefully just trim that flush right there on uh, both of these corners. The back ones are actually a little bit below flush, um, which is actually the main reason why you would wanna put sealant right there because that's that's a perfect spot that it's very possible the oil could seep out of there. But uh, I also don't want to have problems seating the gasket. so. I always make sure that these things are at least flush and uh, you know then put the sealant on all four corners when I sit everything down so 
The only other thing that's extremely critical on the bottom is this oil ring right here. Um, the O ring for the oil pickup. You want to make sure. I'm, I'm talking about like check it eight times. I don't. I don't. You know. I. I think you understand what I'm trying to say. This is extremely critical. And once it's in the truck, it's a lot harder to get to than it is right now. So you want to make sure that you use the correct O ring, and you want to lubricate it. Make sure it's not rolled. Make sure that it feels like it engages. You know, like you can feel it slide into the, the oil pump like evenly. You want to feel a little resistance, but you don't want to have to force it in there. And, um, you know, even if you put it in there one time, you kind of get a feel for it. Go ahead and pull it back out. Make sure the O-ring looks okay. You know, and all that kind of stuff. And then and you can put it back in and feel a little more comfortable with it. Um, but if that O-ring gets a, a nick in it or um, it's not sealing, I mean, you're just not going to have oil pressure. So you've got to make sure... 100% that that o-ring is is happy and so I just wanted to bring that up because Pretty much this is the most important thing on the whole entire, the whole entire build. So anyway um, Moving on. I'm about to start cleaning up the oil pan um, I did clean the gasket service But I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing cleaned up All right, so I've got some baffles um, The Kevin Hansen baffle baffle so, hang on a second here. All right, so, oh, we got a serial number. This is the uh, number 1,748. That's a lot of baffles. But uh, I have done a full video on this install before. But, uh, you know, I'll kind of just cover it a little bit in here. But what you're going to do you know, is, is work this guy in here, and you can see how it sits down. Um, you know down inside the pan and basically you're just gonna drill a couple of holes right here rivet it to the pan the um, splash pan and that will keep oil from sloshing towards the back of the engine under under hard acceleration so um, if you run this baffle and instead of running seven quarts of oil you know keep it keep it at eight you will not have any problems um, I mean unless you're you know, you got some kind of insane build, like you're running a, you know, 1300 horsepower trailblazer or something. Um, this is going to get you by. So, you know, if you're, if you're doing like a twin turbo, like really crazy, like drag only kind of truck or something like that, um, you know, you may want to go with a C6 oil pan or a PCM in North Carolina pickup tube relocation kit. Um, but 90, I'd say 99% of the time, this is all you need right here. It's a very good solution. It works well. It's easy to install. It's very affordable. So anyway, I'm gonna get this guy cleaned up, get that baffle put in, and then uh, we'll get it installed on the engine. And uh, and that'll be, you know, the engine will be pretty much done and ready to go back in. So the next thing that I'm gonna do once I get the engine uh, finished up is I'm gonna go ahead and start working on the transmission. And, uh, you know, I'm doing a, rear wheel drive conversion and i'm also going to go ahead and, and go through it and uh and rebuild it freshen everything up i got some some parts to beef it up a little bit and uh so this isn't like a full performance build but we're going to beef it up freshen it up and uh i've also got a circle d 3200 stall to go in there so that'll be a nice match for the uh cam that we got and that's pretty much it for now so i'm gonna Work on this oil pan and, uh, you know, I'll check in later.